Welcome to another episode of Learner's Corner where I am having an interview with a pupil who is about to take their theory test. In this particular episode, her name is Zabora. She's booked a theory test. We had one coaching session which wasn't filmed because of a technical issue, but we have filmed this one and she will tell you her story, play along, to answer the questions, see how you get on with the questions that she got and put it in the comments and let me know. Okay, um, so this is our second session. Yeah? Yes. Remind me, what, did, what school did you get on the first session? Because the first session wasn't recorded because of my issues on this end. Do you remember what school yeah. you got? Out of 20? I believe I got 18 out of 20. 18 out of 20. Okay, and then after that school, what did you go and do? I did the uh, topics one by one. So I didn't go through all of them, but I went through some of them. I did a 50 mock test. Okay, um, how did you get on with that? Um, I got 41, which was a bit sad. <laughs> so um, I just went through the training. So I was just doing 20 questions when I can, like on transport. Um, okay. I was going to work and coming from work. Mm. Okay. Um, have you got any questions you want to ask me at this point before we kick on? No questions. I'm just going with the flow. <laughs> okay. Two things. One, because your test is booked for more or less end of the month, I've mm. upped the questions, if you like. So there's two choices okay. you've got. 30 question mark test. So we're not going to do 20 because we need to step it up. Yeah? yeah. I would like to get another coaching session definitely before you take your test as well if you're up for that. So we can yes, create another mutual date. Yeah? Okay, so you can do the categories you got the questions wrong in. You know the ones that you sent me originally? Yeah. Or you could do a 30 question mock test where it's just random questions. Choice is yours. So the categories, let me should... remind everyone first, the categories you got yeah. questions wrong in on your previous mock test was alertness, vehicle, motorcycle handling, safety margin, Road and traffic signs, safety, and your vehicle, motorcycles, um, attitude, and accidents. I would do the ones I got previously wrong out. So you want to do the categories? Yes, okay. Please. So I've set it up already, just in case. I thought you might go for that. Um, <laughs> so it's just, as similar to what we did last time. So the third question, can you see my screen? Yes, can I can see. see. Yeah. So same as last time. Um, mm -hmm. You read the questions, tell me which one you want ticked, and then in okay. case of the F1, we review any wrong answers if there's any if you want any questions or if you want me to flag anyone that you want to do tell me flag it we can always go back to it just treat it like a real test if you want it flagged we flag to move on okay okay so when you're ready feel free okay what should you do when leaving your vehicle parked unintended park in a house house in a state lock it and remove the key Park near a busy junction, leave the left indicator on. Don't know why I feel so under pressure. Um, take, your, take your time. <laughs> it's pretty much like the real thing, then, isn't it? <laughs> Just people watching. Um, so, no, not leave the left indicator on. Don't park it near a busy junction. Um, lock it and remove the key. Don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> Don't, literally, try to relax. Which driving technique can help you save fuel? Use in each gear in turn, accelerating sharply in each gear, missing out some gears, using lower gears as often as possible. I'm gonna go with missing out some gears. Okay. Um, yes, I, can't, I, didn't I can't see the question though. Oh, <laughs> I'm assuming what same sign it is. What does this sign mean? Traffic lights out of order, new traffic lights ahead, temporary traffic lights ahead. Amber sign out of order, the first option. Travel lights out of order. What should you do when you move off from behind a parked car? Use external mirrors only. Give a sign, signal after moving off. Look after moving off. Look around before moving off. Looking around before moving off is what you're going for. Yes. Okay. What should you do as you approach this bridge? Move to the right. Keep to 30 miles per hour, slow down, change gear, slow down. Okay. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? Sound the horn, 
Select a higher gear, use the mirrors, flash the headlights. Use the mirror. Use the mirrors. There's been a heavy fall of snow. What should you consider before driving in these conditions? Whether you should drive without wearing your seatbelt, well that's no. Whether you sh should wear sunglasses to reduce the glare. Whether your journey is essential. Whether you should fit an amber flashing beacon to your car. Um, I'm going to go to the third option, whether your journey is essential. Okay. What makes your tires illegal if they have any heavy, if they have any large, gosh, my dyslexia, if they have any large deep cuts in the side wall, if they are of different makes, if they are bought secondhand, if they have different tread patterns, the last option. The last one, this one. Yes, please. You say you've got dyslexia? Um, ne I'm neurodivergent. They, they don't want to go into it, but yeah. Okay. Dyslexia. Because really I've got dyslexia as well, but it's, it's mild, it's not. And if you dress yeah. up, it's more. Uh, if yesterday was the worst case because I was tired yesterday. And I was trying to get my words out <laughs> on the live. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. I misread things. Sometimes I will see, I just assume the words, but yeah. I struggle to actually look at it and read it and not assume it. But yeah. <laughs> it's similar to me, sometimes I get to the end of the sentence and it's like, it made no sense because obviously I'll substitute the words and I have to go back and yeah. read it two or three times. I do that a lot, but it's usually when I'm tired. Yeah, um, the other little thing as well, what you can try, which I do in the classroom with a lot of people who actually admit they've got dyslexia, is sometimes do the voiceover. Yeah, Use I did that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. What should you check before you start a journey in foggy weathers? The windows and lights are clear, clean and clear. You have a warning triangle in the vehicle. You have a mobile phone with you. The radiator has enough antifreeze. What should you check before you start a journey in foggy weather? First option. Okay. You are travelling along this road. What should you... How should you pass the cyclist? Sound your horn as you pass? No. Keep close to them as you pass? No. Change down one gear before you pass? No. Leave them plenty of room as you pass? The last option. Why are vehicles fitted with the rare fog lights? To warn drivers following closely to drop back? To make them more visible when driving at high speed? to make them more visible in thick fog to show when they are broken down in a dangerous position. Third option, why would you fit chains to your wheels? To help prevent damage to the road surface, to prevent skid and deep snow, to help prevent brake lock, brakes locking, to, to help prevent wear, gosh, to help prevent wear to the tyres. Um, I believe it's a th it's the second option. What's the minimum cap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? Literally watch one of your videos. Um, it's not one, it's not three. Because I know you need to leave a gap when it's snowing, raining, and I forgot the other condition off the top of my head. Um, wet dry. or snow and ice. So if you read the question again, remember there's always sometimes there's clues in the question. So you've What's eliminated the conversation we had last time. What you do is you eliminate what it can't be. So you've already got rid of one second. You've got three seconds. So you've got rid of those two. The question says it's wet. So which one do you think it's going to be? And it's between two and four. Because I know when it's snow, it's like ten seconds. Four seconds. Okay. Which signs? means you have priority over uncommon vehicles but i have priority um so if it's not the two on the right hand side we're driving there top left oh this one yeah 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 where must you use dipped headlights during the day when you're driving in poor visibility when you're parking all the time 
when you are driving along narrow streets the first option you are driving your car when may you use handheld a handheld mobile phone when you're parked safely i believe it's that one but we'll go through the rest when your car oh. has, just to go through it because you never can no, be yeah, too sure yeah, be a better car. yeah when your car has an automatic transmission when you're driving less than 30 miles per hour no when you receive a call no so it's the first option okay why could it be dangerous to keep the clutch down or select neutral um for long periods of time while you're driving you will have less steering and brake and braking control fuel spillage will occur engine damage may be caused it will wear tires out more quickly um I know you have less control when you're in neutral for too long, so I'm going to go with the first option. Are you doing manual or auto? Manual. manual. My dad will not allow me to do automatic. He said, yeah. no, you have to do manual. You've got both then, do you know what I mean? Especially yeah. at your age. Yeah, yeah. No, my family won't allow me to do automatic. <laughs> what does this sign mean? It's with flow. Um, with flow bus lanes. Give way to buses, bus station on the right, no, country, country, for, yeah, bus lane. Um, it's definitely with flow. It's not bus station on the right. Um, give way to buses. Um, so I'm trying to think, because we know when you have the cycle and it's with flow, um, there's a lot of circle trying to think um do you know what contrafer means is it with flow with the traffic no contra is going against the flow oh okay against it um, yeah with the flow of traffic contra is going against the flow okay i'm gonna go with option number four contra flow bus lane this one yeah yes please what should you do if you have to make a journey in foggy conditions Keep two seconds behind the vehicle ahead. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Avoid using dipped headlights. Follow other vehicles' tail lights closely. So no, that will be dangerous. Avoid using dipped headlights. You will use fog lights if it's a foggy condition. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Keep two seconds behind. No, because that will be when it's dry. I'm going with option two. Leave plenty of time. Yes. Question 20 at the moment. Oh, okay. How many questions do I have? Well, you've got 10 more. Oh, okay. I take my time with my questions, as you can tell. <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's 100% yeah. correct. You are approaching an unmarked crossroad. How should you deal with the junction? Accelerate and look to the left. That sounds dangerous. Um, accelerate and keep to the middle. Slow down and keep to the right slow down and look both ways i think the safest option would be to slow down and look both ways okay i always get this sign mixed with the other sign no stopping and no is it no waiting with well, the one that has one um yeah wait. One, i always get them mixed up what does this sign mean national speed limit applies no stopping no wait oh, waiting restrictions applied no entry no, no entry is a red one with the right bar. Um, so it's between no stopping and waiting restrictions applied. Um, I always get them mixed up. I don't know why. Um, I think I'm going to go with waiting restrictions applied. What does this sign mean? Bend to the right. No, no right turning. Yes, no traffic on the right right on road on the right close no it's the second option how would your journey be affected by traveling outside the bus times of day how would your journey be affected by traveling outside the oh busy that didn't make sense okay busy times of day it's like the bus times of no let me read that again busy times of the day okay it's been a Welcome very long day <laughs> <laughs> Your journey will use more fuel. Your journey will 
be more hazardous your, your journey will take longer yes wait how will your journey be affected by traveling outside the busy oh traveling outside the busy times of the day and no, though your journey will have fewer delays yeah option four okay you're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing oh gosh how will you what signal will show next i was literally watching your video literally just a second ago about traffic lights and okay <clears throat> and we spoke about this last week so um if i get this right <laughs> oh gosh my memory um okay so it's you're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing so red amber it's not gonna be it's between red and amber and amber alone they didn't mention any particular lights because i know um got if it's is it the pattern and pelican light that if you press it, you saying they don't mention any particular lights obviously you're looking for the pelican and puffins the key words there is traffic lights so it's telling you what type of lights they are traffic lights okay because you've got to remember puffins uh -huh. are sensors and the pelicans are one with the flashing lights so the clue yeah. like i said in the question is in terms of traffic lights so that's the lights itself all you need to know is what the sequence is oh my goodness um i'm going to go with red and amber i'm going to flag that one come back to that i think it's amber alone actually would you do stick with your answer or twist no i'm gonna go with amber i feel like i'm on no deal or no deal <laughs> and it the prize is not doing your theory. Well, you're going to do your theory again, but the prize is you passing your theory. I'm going to go with Amber alone. You changed your answer? Yes, please. Okay, I'm still going to flag it. Okay. What's the reason for traffic calming measures? To make overtaking easier? No, to slow down. To slow traffic down? To make parking easier? No, to stop road rage? To slow down traffic, what does this traffic sign mean? 50 miles, three and a half ahead. Um, compulsory minimum speed limit, compulsory maximum speed limit, advice, separation distance, no, advice, maximum speed limit. Uh, I'm going to go with compulsory maximum speed limit. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? Drive on, keep into the left, no. Overtake, just no. On the right of it, hold your speed and sound your horn, no. Slow down and let the vehicle turn, yes. Which diagram shows a hazard warning light? It's the top right, I believe. This one. Yeah, because I know it's not because the one single one and the double one uh, i know one of them is no stopping or you can pick up and um drop um i forgot what the terminology is but um you can pick up passengers and the other one is no stopping yeah the double yellow is not stopping at any time the single yellow is the restriction you can drop off pick up but you can't wait for them and i'm i know it's either going to be the top right or top left um to warn you of hazards i'm going to stick with the top right and i'll go from there okay you are stopped at the side of the road what must you do if you're waiting there for some time apply the steering lock use your headlights switch off the radio switch off the engine it won't be apply the steering lock I'm going to go with switch off your engine if you're going to be there for quite some time. Okay, and this is the last one. Okay, what's the first thing you must do if you have collision while you're driving your car? Stop at this scene of the incident, I believe it's that. Call your insurance company. Stop only if someone waves at you. No, call the emergency services. Stop at the scene of the incident. Right, so how do you think you did before I click finish? I could have done better. Um, okay, why do you think you could have done better? Some of the questions, I haven't seen them for quite some time, so I need to brush up on my knowledge, because I, I think because I'm focusing so much on the questions I got wrong, I do need to refresh my brain 
on the things that I have gotten right but I haven't seen because mm -hmm. I'm a type of person I need to see things consistently right until it's like locked in my brain um so I would like to believe I've got over half right well, 15 out of 30 at least. I think they're going to come look at the flag ones first. So let's take a look at the flag one that I did flag for yeah. you. Right. So the question approaching traffic lights. So the key with the various traffic lights and the red light is showing what signal is showing. It's easier to work from bottom to top. So rather than just thinking red, what color comes next, try to work from bottom to top. So it's green at the bottom. It's going to be um, amber alone. Then it's going to be red. And then red and amber together is yeah. get ready to go. So the answer on this one would be red and amber. Change from the right answer to the wrong answer. This is what I did on my theory. I had the questions right and then I second guessed myself. I'm going to keep yeah. on amber. Right. We spoke about it last week. It's more confidence. To be honest, with this session, the way you're doing the questions, you've come across more confident than you did on the first one. Yeah. But you still got self-doubts about the answers that you give. Do you know what I mean? You just need to be, think, right, that's the answer. Boom, stick to it. But again, I will suggest on the day itself, flag it just like I did, and then you can also go back and review. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah with traffic lights, it's easier just to work from bottom. Always start from the green because it's all single colours as you go up. And then when you're coming down, then it doubles up as in red and amber. Okay. And the reason why so... is amber on the way up, so you know it's going to be red. They don't have mm. amber on its own on the way up or amber on the way down because then you won't know as a driver what colour's coming next. So that's the reason why it goes green amber it's definitely going to go to red red and amber ready like when you take driving lessons that's your pom preparation observation maneuver and then green is go when it's safe to do so so what traffic lights does it does it go only amber on its own coming down or is it that, is that no traffic it flashes oh okay so it won't be amber on its own it's a flashing amber it's so a, I can so as you go up it's steady yeah. amber so everyone knows it staying still but when it's coming down it's on from a pelican it's flashing amber now i've got that so if it ever says umbrella i'm like well no it can't be a pelican because Correct. it's flashing amber. okay yeah i'll keep with my wrong answer so i learn from this moment <laughs> as long as you're learning that's the main thing that's what i'm saying a lot of people take tests and they're thinking that i've got to pass got to pass the whole point is trying to understand it while you're making mistakes it doesn't make sense and then by the time you go for the real yeah. test hopefully you've got that there. All right, let's take a look at what you got. Oh my god, okay. 27 out of 30. I already right. got three wrong. Yeah. I'm actually shocked. Why are you shocked? Sure? This happens all the time. Like when I was like doing really well, like there was one um theory test. I got, I think I got, I did the whole test. I got like, um, it's out of 50. I think I got like 48, 49. And I was, I was so unsure. I was like, oh my god, I don't know what's going on. It's like the more unsure I am, the better I do. I was if it works for you. Um, so on this one, you passed it. So let's take a look what you've got. We know the traffic light was one of them. This one. I, I didn't really, I don't really know much about tyres. I was just thinking, okay. So if they have any large or deep cuts in the side. Okay, now I'm reading out loud. That makes a lot of sense. If it has deep cuts. But you, when you, sorry, when you actually was reading that you actually sort of emphasized that when you was reading it and then you still went for the patterns <laughs> so i was just thinking okay if the car has patterns in it maybe if it's different that might be illegal no it's know. like patterns for cars is like different soles on trainers and shoes oh, okay. that's the same thing but it's just different patterns so it's, you've got different soles you've got rubber soles leather soles whatever it happens to be it's still yeah. going to grip you so you don't slip and slide i think oh, okay. about if your tires have got cuts in it it can't be safe of course. When they what say cuts, is it like someone has no, a like, No, um, <laughs> driving lesson. So you're parking okay. up, you hit the curb, for example. You're at the curb, you do a maneuver, reverse, and then you hit the curb. That, when you hit the curb, it can potentially cut the or damage the tyres. Mm. So that's what they mean from that. There's not someone physically cutting. It's like if you hit the curb, bang the curb with your tyres, it literally can damage the tyre um, the wall. And when you drive at high speeds, that's the bit that gets hot. So bits are missing, like a balloon. If a balloon gets too hot, it pops. And that's what happens. So you've yeah. got bits missing and driving at high speed, it can just blow out. Okay. So that's why you can't have any cuts or bulges. I was thinking of someone like stabbing your tire. No. Now I... It's just literally, like I said, if you keep hitting the curb and stuff like that, 
the tread depth is 1.6. Again, on the ferry test, they do ask about trailer tires, caravan tires, car tires. It's the same answer, it's 1.6 millimeters. Yeah, I know that off my, I know that off the top of my head, yeah. Okay, <laughs> are you right with this one? Yes. And you said you could get mixed up with this one and the single red, think about it. The single one, the diagonal one, is the weighting restrictions. Think about it, it's got a red X. When you drive okay. on the motorway, you've got a red X over your lane, what does it mean? Um, like the lane's not um, in use. Yeah, so same when you see a red X sign, no stopping. That's what I was thinking, I was like, it might be no stopping. I was just like, it also could be, I don't know. I no, if it's it. single, it's just warning you, there's no stopping. You can drop off and your passengers pick them up, drop them off, but you can't wait for them. This one's mm -hmm. emphasising with the red X. If you see a red X, it's probably going to mean stop, don't go, do whatever it happens to be in context of the question. So you've got a red X here. That's the one you should have gone for as in terms of no stopping because emphasising it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just like no stopping. Yeah, gonna... that's not what if you do the one that is no, the other one is stopping. Yeah. And the traffic lights one we know about. Yeah. Okay, you got any other questions on that before I sign it off on that? Uh, no, I actually want to go through the questions I've gotten right just to see, just to refresh my brain. What should you do when leaving your vehicle parked unattended? Yeah, I just thought the most smartest thing to do was to lock it. And remove the key but then i was thinking park it in the house in the state i'm like well it's not, i'm assuming it's not your home so probably not and the parking near a busy junction that can create um a traffic jam and you're not meant to be parking a junction especially with the zigzags in it right yeah and leave the left indicator on that could be misleading um road users behind you so that wouldn't be safe if you're going to leave your car, always just lock it up. Put the alarm system on, central locking, whatever it is that you've got. Protect it. Yeah. Which driving technique can help you save you? I remember I got this question wrong and I was so confused. And then I was, I think I read the hint and then my dad was explaining it because my dad loves driving. He <laughs> drives, or his, he loves it like so much. And he was explaining it to me. I can't remember in depth, but I just know that it's better to miss out gears. Because I, I used to think using lower gears as often as possible would be good, but if you're on like a motorway, you can't be doing like, you know, two. Um, you can't be in gear two. You probably need to, be, you need to be on a higher gear, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Lower gears burns more fuel, it's power. So think about when you move off the first gear, so it's a power gear. So yeah. if you stay in lower gears as often as possible, you're burning more fuel. By skipping yeah. gears, you are, for example, if you're in the motorway, which you just mentioned, so you can go two, four, six, which means you squeeze the gas three times, as opposed to go one, two, three, four, five, six, then you squeeze the gas six times, so you're burning more fuel. So skipping gears, yeah. it's called a block gear change. On the ferry test, they can use the term block gear change. It's the same thing. So technically, you're saving fuel when you skip the gears. Okay. To be honest, in the built-up area on the driving test, because you're southeast, aren't you? So your nearest town would be Hiver Green. Yeah, so you've got 20 miles now, 30 miles now, 40 miles on Hiver Green. So in the 30, even 20 zone, you're not going to skip gears. You don't want to build up speed that quickly. But when you go onto the 40 roads, then you can go from two to four if the opportunity allows you to. But the examiner's not going to mark you down if you don't. But in the long term, especially with the driving that you're going to be doing, doing your properties, Especially the trip like last week, <laughs> Southampton, you really want to be speaking gears on the motorway, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. What should you do when you move off from behind a parked car? Um, <clears throat> not I think, but if you're only using your, ex your exterior mirror only, that's dangerous. And given a signal after you move off, you should do it beforehand and looking around after. You might have, you might have already hit someone, there might be a child. <laughs> nearby so just unsafe so it's always before yeah look around uh, before moving off is their version of blind spot check for driving lessons yeah. and again the ferry test they would use the word shoulder check same thing but as driving instructors we use the word blind spot check what should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle just thought use your mirrors you should only sound your horn to warn others of your presence slept in a higher gear thought that was dangerous flashing your light <laughs> It's true. Is to warn people of your presence. 
Yeah, so the first option and second option is the same answer, to be honest, because they're both when you have a presence. Um, but if you're slowing down, you don't need to follow your presence. It's checking behind so you know the actions and effects of our old users. And, um, yeah, check whether your journey is essential. Um, you shouldn't be driving without your seatbelt unless you're... They, I remember there's a um, theory question where it says, when can you drive without your seatbelt? Is it when you're... Is it manoeuvring? I don't know the answer. There's two possible answers to that. One is when you're exempt, so you've got a doctor's certificate saying you don't need a seatbelt or need to wear one. And the other one is when reversing, you can remove your seatbelt legally when you're going backwards because the reason for that is you're going slowly. If something happens, technically it's a slow impact. But so yeah, with this it's... one, yeah, if it's no, you've got to really think about it. Is it worth taking the risk when driving? So dangerous. What should you check before you start your journey in foggy weather? The window, the windows and lights are clean and clear, so you're able to see. Yeah, other fogs are mist. It sticks to the windscreen, sticks to the lights. So make sure you. And you got a different fog one as well, which you got later on. In this, but yeah, make sure the windscreen and lights are clear because um, it can block your view. With the cyclist questions, I think I'm pretty good with my cyclist questions. You need to give them space. With our cycling horse riders, it's going to be the same thing. I'll have a slow down, give them plenty of room, and then we're going to be doing that. Why are vehicles fitted with rear fog lights to make them more visible in the thick fog? Yeah. Yeah, the connection there, we've got rear fog lights in the question, and it's got thick fog in the answer, so it makes sense and it tallies. Yeah, that's what I thought. And why would you fit chains to your wheels? Yeah, I don't really understand this question, but I just know that's the right answer. We talk about this every Monday, um, about chains. Yeah, it's Monday. Um, it's, to be honest, it's not for UK drivers, believe it or not. It's more for the Americans uh, and Canadians who have a lot of snow because they do fit okay. chains so they has a lot of better grip. We okay. don't get enough snow for that to happen, but for some reason they're still putting the fairy tale. So it's okay. for thick, deep snow, but like I said, it's for more your Canadian, the Americans and the countries that have a lot of snow, six inches, eight inches of snow. You're driving your car. Why may you use a handheld mobile phone? When you're parked, so you shouldn't be using your phone whilst you're driving because that's not safe. Correct. And the key word there is safely. Yeah. Why could it be dangerous to keep the clutch down or select neutral for long periods of time while you're driving? I just know that when you're in neutral or... Um, yeah, um, when you have the clutch down, you, you have less control. And Go on, sorry. Yeah, I was going to ask, could that cause you to stall then? No, you can't stall when the clutch is down. Oh, but if you're just in neutral, selected... No, you can only mm. stall when you're in gear by bringing the clutch up. Or if the clutch doesn't go down in time before stopping, it's just lack of control. I won't go into too, too much detail, but it's two plates inside the car. When they come together... The engine helps the wheel slow down or the engine braking. But if it's separated for a long period of time, it's a lack of control. The car can pick up speed, which is the term is called coasting. And there is a video uh, yeah. on the channel that um, explains it as well. Yeah, coasting is a bad... T they, they use the other word for the other question in terms of coasting. So it's a bad driving technique, basically. Okay. And then yeah. this one, you saw sort of Ormond and Ards. So you did change your answer from with flow to contra flow um yeah with flow is no arrow under the bus i think i had i had the wrong definition so i had the right intention but i didn't know what because i thought contra flow i was like contra flow was with flow and then you're like no contra flow is it's going against so you're going up the one-way street with the two arrows and the bus or the arrow is going down against the flow of traffic so that's, that's why it's contra is going against the flow of traffic now, if it didn't have an arrow under the bus, it's with flow, but the bus would now be on the other side, the correct side. So no arrow under the bus or the cycle is with flow, and with the arrow is contra flow. Yeah, so contra, like contradicting. Yeah, so if you like, yeah. Amazing, okay. What should you do if you have to make a journey in foggy conditions? Yeah, because you were like, leave plenty of time. I was like, I'm going with that, even if it's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, because so fog is hard to see, so you should be driving slower. Everybody drives slower. So mm. if your journey takes half an hour normally, then in fog it's going to take longer. 
So, you, like I said, you have the two fog questions. One is going to be clean the windscreen or the lights. And if you don't get that one, then get this one. You know, and then it's time for your journey. Yeah, because I didn't see, you know, um, fog lights. So I thought, okay, there's no fog lights. And it won't be dipped lights because you only use dipped lights in different conditions. And it won't be following the vehicles because that's dangerous. And a two second wall is for when it's dry. So I was like, Correct, okay. Yeah. So Need plenty of time for your journey. You are approaching unmarked crossroads. How should you deal with with the junk? It's just all about being safe. Correct, so I just yeah. want, you have to look. You shouldn't accelerate. I said, like, oh, that's dangerous. And it said twice, oh, that's very dangerous. <laughs> so I know to be, you have to look both sides because if you just look one way, you don't know what's coming the other way. Correct, yeah. And then something you know about is you're no stopping. Now you yeah. no stopping. I see this sign all the time when my mum drives. I learned that from like, what, eight years old. That is, you know, no right turn. No right so, turn. How would your journey be affected by? So I keep reading this because my brain wasn't. It wasn't it clicking. Wasn't the busy bit was it? Yeah. I was like busy bus, but I kept <laughs> saying bus. Um, but once I finally comprehend what it said, I was what it read. I I realized okay, it would be better. To, um, you'll have fewer delays and fewer traffic. So I was like, okay. Um. Yeah, just outside the school, run outside, people going to work, easy life, especially when you yeah. do. Oh gosh, that's why I tried, to, I tried to leave before nine or after nine, and I tried to finish all my like viewings before three, because it's just hectic. It's just so hectic. It's on we know about, we explain where to go from the yeah. bottom to top, to the spread the yeah. yeah, the best, because it's a traffic calming measures, the best thing I thought of was slow down traffic. 100%. Um, yeah, because it had the red circle, so red is must do. Correct. You must abide. You're driving behind a large... Yeah, I see this question all the time, so it's just always slow down. Just give them time because they're a larger vehicle. Yep. Yeah, because I was just a bit like... Because sometimes when I see questions about roads, I just think about the roads on my street, and I'm like, okay, they don't look like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, they don't look like that. <laughs> so okay, when I'm driving, well, not me, but when I'm driving with someone, when it's the longer lines, I know, okay, potential hazards. Yeah, long, short gaps is hazard lines. And uh, these ones are the shorter, but bigger gaps. They're centre lines. This literally give you a visual clue of the centre of the road. Okay. Just, you are stopped at the side of the road what must you do if you're waiting there for some time yeah just switch off your engine save your fuel and most importantly save the environment that's the reason why mm. what's the first thing you must do if, if you have a collision yeah because i thought the first thing you do is call your insurance company why? or call the emergency services um no, i don't no. know but then go on mm -hmm. so oh no then i have to think yeah, I was, I was gonna say you have to think. You have to stop though in order to call them. Correct. So I was jumping down. So like you're gonna have to stop anyway. So you can't call them while you're driving because that's not safe. So yeah. stop at the. Remember, not every accident is meant to service. That's or true. A call to the insurance company because you can sort it out amongst. If it's just a slight damage, you don't want to go for insurance. You might as well pay uh, your own pocket. But yeah. you're hundred percent correct. If you have an accident, you do have to stop to see how bad it is and make sure nobody's hurt. Yeah. So hopefully you got some value from Deborah's mock test. Send her some love in the comments and good wishes for a test on the twenty eighth of December. If you are interested in being filmed, send me an email at info at driving theory UK explaining why you want to take part. Your struggles with the theory test you like what you don't like give me some background information and i will arrange a mutual time to film you and coach you remember the session's ongoing until you pass your theory test make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel if you like more videos like this youtube's going to show you a video here i'm going to show you a video here god from which is relevant to you and i shall catch you in the next video